Rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide among young people have risen dramatically in the last decade. A much buzzed about book out this week tracks the possible causes and potential solutions for what author Jonathan Haidt calls the anxious generation. Brooke Silva Braga met the NYU sociologist as he made his case for four dramatic changes in the way America raises its children. This has to stop. Using little more than a whisper quiet voice in a PowerPoint presentation, Jonathan Haidt is attempting a kind of revolution. We have overprotected our children in the real world and underprotected them online. He wants us to totally rethink what truly endangers our kids. So for a whole variety of reasons, parenting changed in the English speaking world in the 1990s. It became paranoid. So I wanted to dramatize just how quick and extreme this change was. First, Haidt asks his middle-aged audience how old they were when they could first venture away from home on their own. Yell out your age, okay? Six, eight, eight, six, eight, six, eight. So that's what I always find, six to eight. That was the norm. Then he asks them to shout out the age they've given their own kids that same freedom. And all you hear is double-digit numbers. Almost perfect uniformity, 10 to 12. And that's insane. The crime rate is way down. Everything is so much safer, but we're afraid, we're paranoid about our kids' safety. And why is that a bad thing? Because the way that a human being becomes a self-governing, autonomous adult is by practicing being a self-governing, autonomous child and adolescent. We've set up a cycle of incompetence. Haidt is a business school professor at NYU. But several years ago, he grew interested in the ways the modern world was changing his students. That research led to the anxious generation, where Haidt argues kids were first made weak by overprotection for mostly imaginary dangers, then given devices that gobble up their attention and let parents keep even closer tabs on them. So who has a phone, their own phone? We checked in with sixth graders in Manhattan and the New York suburb of Port Washington. How many people have a phone? Height calls this the great rewiring of childhood. You make the case that this is literally rewiring mm -hmm. people's brains. Yes. Think about neural development. Think about a brain. The neurons feel their way out and they develop based on feedback from experience. But what happens when kids, instead of playing with blocks in each other, they're on screens all the time. You're radically changing the inputs. Kids are now growing up in a sea of screens. He says this rewiring, which started around 2012, and he can't stop his hands from swiping, created the anxious generation. There's a tidal wave of mental illness, and it's especially anxiety and depression. And tragically, we see very much the same pattern with suicide. And this is what happens after 2010, more than doubling of the suicide rate. Now, whether tech is truly to blame is debated by researchers and contested by tech companies. The existing body of scientific work has not shown a causal link between using social media and young people having worse mental health outcomes. Haidt insists the research does show causation, most clearly for teenage girls. But even if it didn't, he says, there are other undeniable impacts. I tell them all the time, jokingly, that they don't know how to play in the park. Vivian Torres told us her 22-year-old son never had trouble playing in the real world, but a decade later, 11-year-old Barbara seems glued to her devices. The phone can be like, like, I don't want to say addicting, but like, you know, like it can be like really likable and stuff. So sometimes you're like, oh wait, after this video, I'll go outside, but then at least on to another video and to another video and stuff. How would you describe that moment when you're like, eh, I could go outside, but I guess I'll just do I this. I feel like lazy. Like I feel lazy. I'm like, you know, but I don't want to get up. Do you think there's anything that could change that? Maybe without the phone. And actually Barbara's phone just broke. So she's trying that out. But then there's Height's first point about nervous parents. Even though Vivian grew up here in the Bronx in the more dangerous 1980s, she doesn't feel comfortable letting Barbara go off alone, especially without a phone. Our parents didn't have constant contact with us. Why do we need it with our kids? I don't, I wish, I, I can't answer that because now it just feels like you need to be in contact with people. Is that normal? <laughs> it's become normal. <laughs> Is it so. good? I don't think it's good. I don't like that. I don't like it.
it's funny, you're both saying, you don't like what this has done to me, yeah. but you can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is a set of collective action problems. Haidt has no easy solutions, but he does offer some hard ones, asking parents, schools, and tech companies to each do one difficult thing. That's the key. We have to act together. First, for parents, no smartphones before high school, just flip phones if needed. If even a fraction of families stuck to that, Haidt says, those kids wouldn't be socially ostracized, they'd have each other. Second, the ask for schools, no phone use ever within their buildings. Height wants the phones locked up for the whole school day as they are in Joe D'Amico's class at the Professional Performing Arts School. It really does help. They were much more distracted when they had their phones on them. Third, the big ask for tech companies or possibly for lawmakers, no social media until 16. Right now, the minimum age is 13, but even that is unenforced. These are 11 and 12 year olds. How many folks are on Instagram? So about half. How many are on Instagram? TikTok. TikTok. Snapchat. Snapchat. Meta, Instagram's owner, declined our interview request. So did TikTok. Snap never responded. But in a statement, Meta told us enforcing the age rules requires the help of device makers like Apple and Google. Apple and Google also declined our interview requests, but have pointed out their devices already come with parental controls. Still, taken together, these efforts from some of the world's largest companies are not smarter than a sixth grader. And so how do you get on? Um, lie about your age. Lie about your age. Oh. If you're not 13, how are you on the apps? Oh. Fake an age. Then I switched the year. No one really says anything about it. I think most of the apps don't really care. Many parents told us the battle over kids' tech use was already lost. But Joe D'Amico says he hopes the experience of these kids will lead the next crop of parents to make different choices. When we have our next incoming class of sixth graders come in, I want to make a strong push that if you haven't already given your child a smartphone, don't get them flip phone. Here's why. But if all we do is get parents to take away that stuff and don't give them freedom, what are they going to do? Just sit and look at the wall? So Height has also co-founded a group called Let Grow. So take a look at the different ideas. Both the classes we visited were just starting the program. You have to learn how to do these things, right? Kids are asked to do something independent. Pour it into the tray. Something they haven't done before. I'm opening the oven now. God bless you. Barbara Baez went grocery shopping for the first time all by herself. Well, yes, she did let our cameraman tag along. And yes, she grabbed Fruity Pebbles, Ramen Noodles, and Doritos. How was it? It was amazing. <laughs> I'm super proud. You're smiling. I feel really like, finally, I feel really, really proud of myself. For CBS Saturday Morning, Brooke Silva Braga, New York. I love this. I just love the idea of of thinking, the you game. love the idea yeah. of thinking about it at least, if not of the well, no, I love, I, I, I love. It's like it's like you know, Back to the Future. It really is. It's it's like giving our kids some hope. I think about anxiety a lot because it's something our kids face. It's hard. We have kids that are yeah, in this yeah. range, and I right. think about it. I'm like, oh man, we do yeah. that. We didn't let him do stuff on his own until double digit age, that kind of thing. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, every parent says the same thing. Yeah. I, I was allowed out when I was seven, yeah. and today it's like 13 or something, mm -hmm. yeah. whatever it is. It's just banning social media till they're 16 seems like a really yeah. big what, ask yeah. or a hard thing to do. The, the point that he made, everybody, it's like a cold turkey for society. Yeah. Oh, you know? More discussion to come on yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah.